Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. What do sentences in English have to do with writing headlines? Quite a lot, actually. This is the first part out of eight replays that we're going to have because we're going to be away in Sri Lanka. And this first part is about writing headlines with and, even, and but. When I sit down with my niece, Marsha, and we go through English comprehension and she writes out stuff, we use and, even, and but to create compound sentences. And that is because and moves the sentence forward, but pulls it back, so it creates contrast, and even kind of gets you in a completely different world. So and, even, and but, they work really well when you're constructing sentences in any language. When you use them in headlines, they take on a life of their own. This is a really neat trick when you're writing headlines, so try out and, even, and but. And here's the podcast. Every year, 20 billion bottles of wine are produced, and 80% of those bottles are closed with a single substance, a substance called cork. The cork, as you would suspect, comes from the bark of the cork tree. The bark has to be harvested, and then you get the cork for those 16 billion bottles. But there is no hurrying the process. That's how cork works. A tree must be at least 25 years old before the bark can be harvested. After that, it can be stripped of the bark every nine years. Even so, the first stripping is totally unsuitable for wine and is used only for industrial purposes. The second stripping still lacks the quality needed. It may take well over 40 years before the cork is considered good enough to be put in a wine bottle. As you can see, a cork tree can't be rushed. Good headlines too need a little time. But in today's world, we need our headlines for our newsletters, podcast titles, webinars, and our workshops. Is it really possible to turn out a great headline almost immediately? Or do we have to wait? What we'll cover in this podcast is the concept of headlines in a hurry. We'll learn three ways to write great headlines and to write them under pressure. But we'll have fun, and instead of just learning three ways, we'll go back to grammar class. So what are the three ways we'll cover? The first is how to use AND in your headlines. The second is about EVEN. And the third is about without. Yes, we're talking about conjunctions and prepositions and all the stuff that you didn't really like in grammar class. So let's get this show on the road, shall we? Remember Windows 3.1? I sure do. I was a cartoonist still living in Mumbai, India at the time, and that's when I got my first computer. It was a 386 and top of the line with programs such as CorelDRAW and Photoshop. Right before I got the computer, I would go through the tedious task of drawing a cartoon, photocopying it several times, and then coloring each version. Clients wanted to see the same cartoon rendered in different colors, and so I'd spend trips back and forth to the photocopy shop. But it also wasted a lot of my day. 
then along came Windows 3.1 and I was able to scan and to color my cartoons in under half an hour. From paper to the computer was my big leap forward when it came to cartoons. And yet, several years later, when I moved over from cartoons to copywriting, I struggled a lot with writing headlines. Every time I sat down to write headlines, I'd get the blue screen of death in my brain. Until the day I figured out the incredible power of AND in moving a headline forward. When writing a headline, all you have to do is add the conjunction AND, and your headline seems to dart forward. Let's take a few examples, shall we? So example number one is how to raise your freelance rates. And then we'll put AND in it. How to raise your freelance rates and get a greater number of clients. Example number two, how to create magic with your brand stories. And we're gonna put AND in it. How to create magic with your brand stories and engage new readers every time you publish. And the final example, how to keep fit over the age of 55. And now we put AND in it. How to keep fit over the age of 55 and still eat everything you want. What did we notice with these AND headlines? The first was the sheer simplicity of the headline. We start the headline as if it's going to be a really short one, like how to raise your freelance rates. Then, as an afterthought, we add the AND. What this tends to do is give your headlines more oomph. The first part of the headline without the end is good enough, yet the second part allows your headline to move the client forward. Which is why the end headline has a far greater curiosity factor than the headline without this end conjunction. When writing AND headlines, I use the parenthesis or the M dash. Now the M dash is the long dash. It's used when you seem to be breaking a thought mid-flow. It seems like you've already finished with the thought. For example, how to create magic with your brand stories. Then suddenly the M dash shows up out of nowhere, talking about new readers. So what it's done is it's brought in a new thought, a much richer thought. Now your headline reads as how to create magic with your brand stories, M dash, and engage new readers. So what you're doing is you're adding that little bit and you're using either the parenthesis or the M dash. But you don't always have to use the M dash. You can just use the parenthesis instead. The parenthesis does something similar to the M dash. It creates a continuation of the thought and the client feels a greater tug towards the AND type of headline. Visually too, the headline is more arresting. When you look at the headline side by side or even in your inbox, the second headline seems to say a lot more. But because there's the M dash or the parenthesis, it's like you're getting some breathing space as the reader. If you wondered why you had to sit in boring grammar class, well, now you know. You're in headline grammar class and you just found out how to use AND, M dashes and parentheses to good effect. Like Windows 3.1, blessed soul. It got me from a bit of struggle to super fast execution and you too can build a headline in next to no time by using the AND. But is there a way to use the AND type of headline successfully? Sure there is. And the best way to use the AND headline is to write the first part. For example, how to write irresistible calls to action. Then you walk away. So your headline is already really good, but when you come back several hours later, your brain will have something to add to that headline. So your headline will read like this how to write irresistible calls to action and increase CTR by 30%. The space between writing the first and second part of the headline 
isn't necessary, but it does make for better headlines. Keeping a break between your activities helps your brain to hum in the background and to come up with a far superior idea than if you simply jumped on the first possible idea that comes to your head. Okay, first part of the grammar class is done. Let's go to adverb land, the land of even. I'd never heard of the comedian called Michael Jr. Then one day, I'm lying on the sofa, scrolling through Facebook, and this video pops up. In the video, Michael Jr. is talking about how comedy works. And here's what he says. I want to explain to you how comedy works. Some comedians know this. A lot of them don't. They just do it because they don't know what's going on. I feel like God has given me the math on how comedy works. I want to share with you. This is how it works. First, there's a setup. And then there's a punchline. Let me explain. The setup is when a comedian uses his talents and resources to seize any opportunity to ensure that his audience is moving in the same direction. The punchline occurs when he alters that direction in such a way that was not anticipated by the audience. When you catch on to this change, you have received the punchline. The results are revelation, fulfillment, and joy expressed through laughter. I just thought I'd share that with you so you can enjoy these jokes on another level. <laughs> He's talking about the adverb. Yep, Michael Jr. doesn't know it, but he's given you a quick grammar lesson. And that's precisely the grammar lesson you can use in your headlines by using the adverb even. When you use even in your headline, you're doing just what Michael Jr. is talking about. You're taking the audience in a specific direction and then moving them to the punchline, which isn't quite anticipated by the audience. Ha! You're eager for grammar lesson number two, aren't you? Well, here goes. We'll start off with a few headlines. So the first headline is how to rank high on Bing. And we'll put even into that and we'll say how to rank high on Bing even with low Google rankings. Second example, why you should raise your freelance rates. And then we'll put some even in it. Why you should raise your freelance rates even if you're not sure you're worth it. Third example, how to quit your day job even how to quit your day job even if you're cash strapped. We'll do a fourth one. Okay. How to travel first class. How to travel first class even if you're dead broke. See that setup in the punchline? It's everywhere you know this setup and punchline. When you read the brain audit, you will have the concept of the problem and the solution. That is a setup and punchline. When you look at nature, you'll notice a branch, and then you'll notice the twig. A snowflake has the same setup and punchline. There is the bit, and then the little bit sticking out of it. And of course, when we go to headline land, the adverb even creates a powerful punchline. It brings out that extra bit of information that you're simply not expecting. And in doing so, it gets and it keeps your attention. Just like the and, it helps to use the parenthesis or the em dash when you're writing these headlines. And just like the and, there's no rule, at least not that I know of, whether you use the em dash or the parenthesis. Just be sure to use it because it creates that setup and punchline both visually and intellectually. Visually, when you look at that headline, you can see there's a separation, but intellectually, it's that extra bit that's showing up. And you aren't expecting that. You aren't particularly expecting the headline to go in such a weird direction, were you? So remember, set up, punchline. That's the power of even.
we've covered and and even. Should we go to the next grammar lesson? Let's head to without, which happens to masquerade as a preposition, adverb, and conjunction. Even if you can't remember where it sits in the grammar hierarchy, without does a pretty cool job when you're tired of using and and even. And let's find out how. To write a headline with without, all you have to consider is the opposite. And you can do this with random headlines. So let's take an example. How to raise your prices. How to raise your prices without losing clients. Or how to raise your prices without increasing the quantity of product. Or how to raise your prices without considering the competition. Or how to raise your prices without the accompanying fear factor. When you write a without headline, guess what you're really doing? Yep, you're bringing up the objection in your head. Notice the second part of the headlines? They brought out the fear of losing clients, of needing to increase the quantity of the product, the fear of competition, and yes, the fear of fear itself. All of these are obvious objections to your premise or your article. So what's a grammar headline writer to do? Well, it's perfectly simple. All you really need to do is write some sort of headline and then think of all the reasons why it's not a good idea. Or at least why you'd have some objections to that idea. Let's take an overly simple headline like How to lose weight in two weeks. What are the objections to losing weight? Maybe you're a foodie. Maybe you don't want to go on a crazy diet. Maybe you don't care about exercise. And then you slap these objections on to the first part of the headline. So you wrote your first part of the headline. Now let's go to the second part. So how to lose weight in two weeks without giving up your foodie habits. How to lose weight in two weeks without going on a crazy diet. How to lose weight in two weeks without needing to exercise endlessly. And there you have it, without comes to the rescue. Isn't grammar wonderful? We should really do a summary, but what would we cover? We already know the three methods to make our headline stand out. And all it takes is just three parts of the grammar universe. And, even, and without. And gets your headline moving boldly forward. Even does this little setup and punchline trick where people are not expecting it to appear. And without is all about objections. You dream up the objection, slap it on the second part of the headline, and you're ready to go. See? Those grammar Nazis were right. You should pay attention to your grammar, because even if your brain feels like it's running on Windows 3.1, you'll still be able to turn out super curious headlines. So what's the one thing that we can implement today? Remember the advice you got about writing part of the headline first and then going away? Well, here's a reminder. You may get so excited at your proficiency at grammar class that you may forget to take that break. Leaving that task unfinished ensures that your brain brings up and rejects many options. Eventually, when you go back to your headline, you're likely to get a far superior headline than the first one you happen to think of. So put space between all your activities. This article was written over a period of three days. The outline on one day, part of the article on another, and finally, the article was completed on the third day. And only after these three days did it go for an edit. A headline might seem almost puny when compared with an article, but Letting the brain relax helps you get a far superior output. And that's pretty much it. Grammar lesson is over. School's out.
And that brings us to the end of this podcast. So what's happening in psychotactics land? As we come to the end of the year, one of the things that crosses our mind is that we haven't completed all the stuff that we wanted to do. And this is common for everyone. However, one of the reasons why we struggle so much is because we don't plan as often as we should, or we don't plan taking chaos into consideration. Every single day has chaos. Every single day, you're going to run into a variation of chaos. Either you don't finish the work on time, or it gets too long, or someone interrupts it. But when we plan, we don't take that into consideration. And chaos planning shows you how to do that. Now you probably wonder, why do you need a book for that? I already explained it to you. And one of our clients wrote in a testimonial today, which is why I'm sharing with you. And he said, I didn't think that it would contain such potent, life-changing information. So I struggled to justify spending money on it. But chaos planning has reshaped my thinking. He goes into a lot of detail in the testimonial, and I don't want to read the whole thing to you. But what I think is a major problem is this inability to see chaos as part of your day, to make chaos your friend in a way. And that's what chaos planning does for you. So if you've been kind of struggling with chaos or just planning, then they come together in a book and it's called Chaos Planning. And that's available on the website. Check it out. I think it'll do you a lot of good as you come to the end of this year. You start off the new year taking chaos into consideration, not leaving him out of the plan. You're probably aware of the landing pages workshop that we're having in Singapore and Brussels as well. And the Brussels one got filled up in next to no time. So that was two or three weeks ago and we were still in Australia and that was it. There are no seats left in Brussels, but there are some seats in Singapore. The dates have changed slightly. It's now the 11th to the 13th of April, 2018. So come join us and learn how to write that landing page, that sales page because you're gonna need it for all your products, all your services, any workshop, any events that you're gonna have, you have to write a sales page and a good sales page so that your conversion goes up. So that's the workshop and that's me saying bye for now. I'll be back with the second replay next week. Bye-bye. Still listening? So this is the 1st of December. Well, that's when this episode should be airing anyway, and it's being recorded in advance. We don't leave until the 3rd of December for Sri Lanka. Now, we're going to be away for a month, and in that time, we won't be checking email. We won't be doing any work. Most people ask this question. They go, do you check email while you're away? And the answer is absolutely not. For starters, what kind of email can you get? Even though we've been running our business for 17 years online, we get just three types of emails. The first is, I haven't got my download. The second is probably some kind of issue that needs to be resolved urgently. And the third one is a casual email saying, hi, Renuka, or hi, Sean, and they'll send something across. So there are just these three emails, and they're very easily handled by someone else. And if there's something truly, truly urgent, which hasn't been the case since probably 2005, and we leave instructions to message us through Messenger or some other method, and then if we need to, we can step in and resolve the issue. But we really haven't had any issue. And usually the response to most clients is, Sean and Renuka are away on holiday. They're eating, drinking, and making merry, or something to that effect. And usually the client says, sure, we'll wait for a month. Now, when I get back, there is a lot of email. But we can categorize that email using software like Spark so that I get maybe 25 emails on the first day and 25 on the second day and 25 on the third day. And then eventually I can go through the 200 or 300 emails that we have missed while we're away. Usually there aren't that many, there are probably about 10 emails that I have to deal with per day when I get back. And that's how we deal with email. So you don't really have to check email, you don't have to be in touch with your office because frankly, even a single email can ruin your day. That's what we do and that's our email system while we're away. If you're going on a break, even a short break for the weekend, 
get someone else to check your email. Any email, any message can completely change the whole perspective of your break or your vacation. So that's what we do. We completely tune off and we eat, we drink and make merry. I'll say bye for now. Bye bye.